<clears throat> Hello everybody, good morning, good evening and good afternoon to wherever you are. So today finally we are live with Srinivas who has made a whopping 80 point jump in his GMAT score and he managed to do that with one of the hurdles that most of the most of the aspirants usually face in verbal and we're going to look right away what those hurdles what, what that hurdle was and how he get past it so first of all before beginning before revealing the secret of this success story that we're going to discuss today uh, we already have more than 40 members watching us live so uh, more than four members so let's see um if you can hear me guys I would love to have a comment in the comment section box that you can hear me out loud and you can see me well, right? So in the meantime, we are doing that. Let me just pull up a screen. And yes. Okay, so what you are seeing over here is the ESR of Srinivas. So he scored um, a 640, 640 before and in the reading comprehension, he was there with 19th percentile, as you can see on the screen in reading comprehension over there. But then he got this spike. He made that jump from 19th percentile to a whopping 96th percentile. And we're going to see right now. Yes. So you see now on the screen, you see the that Srinivas had made this jump from RC 19th percentile to 96th percentile. So guys, let's stay tuned to the end of this video session and see how Srinivas managed with a full-time job to get that 80 point jump and with this whopping uh, increment in the RC section from 19th percentile to a 96th percentile. So without further much ado, let, let us bring Srinivas on the screen and invite him over here. So hi Srinivas, a very warm hi, welcome. Nati. Thank you Hi, for Nati. taking out some time and joining us in the uh, live session with the people and, you know, agreeing to help out all the aspirants who are eager to, you know, because this is the time when people are just struggling to get the scores. Round one deadlines just got, you know, they've just gotten up. Round two deadlines, they are on the horizon and then people are really struggling to get there. So, Srivas, uh, welcome aboard. And how it, how, what was your first feeling when you saw that 720, you know, on that screen? Thank you, uh, Rajiv, for inviting me, and it's a pleasure to share my experiences. And uh, to start with, uh, I think I would have just been thrown out of the exam center when I saw the 720 because I was almost about to yell at the <laughs> yell at myself, and you know, jump jump and shout. But uh, since I've already given the exam, I know I know the drill at the exam centers and the decorum that I'm supposed to maintain. Uh, so I, I somehow ended up controlling my emotions. Uh, I would definitely say it was more of a sense of a relief than, uh, you know, the moment of success uh, because it was my practically the third attempt. And, uh, you know, you you hardly have any gas left by the time you reach your third attempt in GMAT, right? So, yeah, in, with that, I would definitely say it was a sense of a relief when I looked at 720 on the board, especially for, after what has happened in the last two attempts. Yes, I would definitely say that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Lovely. Lo you know, nice to hear that. That <clears throat> the best part is that you kept going on. You never quit, right? So that's the key. Most of the people they feel like you know, can they even do that? So the reason is that it's not about whether they, whether they can do it or not. It's whether you keep yourself going on. Because if you're walking, you know, if you're walking in the right path, you will end up in the right destination. It's just that you know, hitting onto that momentum. I, so great, Shivas. So, I agree, Rajiv. So I would now it's it's more kind of a uh, you know, sticking on to that uh, uh, the goal, the final goal that you wish to crack, and uh, sometimes all it takes is to keep fighting on rather than keep uh, self doubting. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So Shrivas, uh, tell tell us more a little bit more about yourself. What do you do? Yeah. So uh, I'm a chartered accountant by profession, and I'm currently working at uh, you know Godrej Properties as a tax head of uh, the zone. And uh, it involves a full time, you know, work and always uh, focused at a deadline oriented, statutory deadline oriented work. So we're always on the toes the whole day at work. And uh, so the, and I have a work experience of uh, almost eight years now and typically uh, helping clients with uh, taxation and uh, financial aspects of the story. Right. So uh, with that, um, uh, once I decided to start with my MBA preparations, 
gmat was the first thing that that comes to your mind and that's something mm-hmm. uh, that you do and so going with that uh, the preparations uh, it's you hardly get time with the with the amount of work that you do in the whole day you almost have a 10 to 12 hour mm-hmm. work schedule every day and uh, you have like practically 3 to 4 hours left in the day with some energy and somehow you plan to manage yourself in that and that's how it uh, you know you put yourself through okay so with that you with all of that so how did you manage your schedule how did you get you know got that time so to to, to, to give you a little background uh, you know uh, right when before before i enrolled up with gmat was my study schedule almost remained the same because i still was working in the same setup so my schedule would have been early morning get up and you know start open your laptop and start setting and revising things for or studying things for gmat Uh, you pick up wands you pick up verbals and you start doing one by one modules each and every day and then you start your work you sit the whole day for your work and by the time you end your day you hardly left any gas to uh, move your patients uh, so that's how it it started all along and um, by the time i i had a plan of giving my first gmat uh, test by you know scheduled around july and uh, that's when i was hitting a good score in the mocks as well so mm-hmm. you kind of gives you an assurance that yes you are doing well in your gmat preparations and everything but ultimately it's the mock though it's a good reflection of your position it's not the exact reflection mm-hmm. or there are there are always a i would say a plus minus of uh, 30 point at least uh, with respect to mock scores uh, so you should always have that uh, you know the gap Uh, factored into your score whenever you are giving your mocks and you are planning to give your uh, gmat test so that that way uh, i'd give my um, first test online at uh, from the on, from the remote method from the online test mode where uh, it was i mean unfortunate it was with a lot of technical glitches and others but then i immediately enrolled myself for a physical test center uh, mm-hmm. based exam where i uh, though i felt confident of scoring good Uh, uh for some uh, you know you, you you know what happens on the exam day at the center you know and you go uh, something goes wrong and mm-hmm. you see your questions coming easier as you go along and then you started you know, then you start worrying that why am i getting all the easier questions am i not doing it right because it's a uh, you know uh, you know how the test pattern is so uh and then i then i see the screen and i have a 640 uh coming up on my screen and i look at verbal section and it's it says v28 and that gives a shock of my life which is a second attempt already and i already <laughs> shelling out enough money to uh, you know enroll for the exams and uh, i also in you know, spent enough on the you know prep uh, gmat prep online preps the previous ones where i have enrolled so all in all it was it was kind of a downswing uh, given the preparation the efforts the money the time that you have all put in so once you see that score it's it's you have a lot of self doubt you know uh, creeping in and you mm-hmm. keep uh, uh, questioning yourself whether whether you are capable of hitting or you know breaching that 700 mark that's like the uh, that's like the, you know the cream layer of gmat scorers so you always have a self doubt whether you are able to do that or not uh, so you need some time of introspection that you need to take back and once you sit in introspect and once you are um, you know happy with that uh, once you are, once you have consoled yourself enough you can then probably uh, you know start it again and then i i'm sure everyone can again get back to the dream score that they have achieved for mm-hmm. so yeah so that's that's how it all started i would say <laughs> the journey with gmat was and i'll elaborate once you go ahead with the conversation mm-hmm. i can elaborate how it went but that's where it all started i would say sure definitely so what do you think would be you know the reasons that you were you were you were not able to attain the score first time because you eventually got to a 720 right so that means you had the capability capability inside of you so what was that part which restricted you from achieving that score in the first attempt so um so rajiv i believe uh, i think uh, i believe everyone has that capability to breach the 700 mark it's it's not the inherent knowledge that that defines your score uh mm-hmm. practically because uh like you know like all the other previous interviews have also the candidates have mentioned and it's a general uh, you know uh, knowledge out there that gmat doesn't test your inherent knowledge on any concepts or anything it more or less 
targets your application skills mm-hmm. on on the on the concepts more uh, uh, you know how do you apply the relevant learnings hardly i mean i would have hardly come across 20 formulas in the entire quant section i mean uh, that's that's the that's probably the easiest of things that you can get as an indian student to, to put yes. it on context <laughs> you know uh, our uh, <laughs> mathematics our quant learning from right from school involves so many formulas and so many uh, you know algebraic formulas uh to have only hardly 20 formulas to remember in the entire gmat uh, exam is something very evident of the fact that gmat doesn't test your uh, you know uh, theoretical knowledge it more is with uh, uh, an analytical reasoning or higher order reasoning that that is generally said to test that so uh having said that i believe even the in, uh, at least with the asian and the indian uh, students i believe the quant is kind of a natural uh, strength to them uh, i had an impression at the start that i was not so good at quant and i thought uh, that verbal would have, would be my strength but i was very brutally proven wrong on that <laughs> and uh, so quant uh, you you generally would pick up pretty quickly you know as you as you learn along you realize that the questions are framed in such a manner that uh, you know it's, it's it's almost direct application of formulas and direct application of theories right so mm-hmm. you would definitely pick up quant in a better manner but when it comes to verbal we have an assumption that we are pretty good at it because we can speak good uh, uh, good language good english communication because indians generally have uh, a better uh, vocabulary skills so we we tend to believe that you know we have it uh, and that's why you go with that assumption that i can do it plus the one mistake that generally people do or even i did is to treat gmat exam preparation as a regular preparation for any other exams you know mm-hmm. that is a mistake i think i did and uh, i went through uh, you know reading a lot of formulas uh, practicing n number of questions as much as you want you take module after module after module and then you pick up different you know prep methods from from the online portals you have gmat club throwing in thousands of questions to you with various sources you want to absorb everything on your head you know and then you think yet you feel a sense of uh, you know insufficiency that you know you haven't done much to the preparation and then you then you want to believe that since i have put okay since i have put let's say uh, 200 hours of preparation or 250 hours of preparation to this mm-hmm. you would want to believe that okay you have done enough and then you get to the exam and that's when you realize that uh, <laughs> you know the result shows you that uh, shows you otherwise that you know that's not the case so i think that's where i went wrong there was no structured manner to uh, you know uh, uh, approach the exam or there was no systematic planning to this exam and uh, you we generalized the gmat exam as any other exam i think that's a crucial mistake that what people do and what i did also so i think that's where i went wrong okay so to just to summarize that you know so most of the thing most you know like most of the experience what we generally where we generally err on is following Uh, you know unchannelized sources of information so that results in lack of structure that results in lack of consistency we might as well miss on to some concepts because we feel that you know we have put in so many hours of efforts and now we are ready so gmat yeah. is actually not testing you on how many hours of efforts you have put in have those efforts been put in the right direction in the right manner that's the question at play right and the third thing which is very important is that you know gmat is unlike any other exam it tests you not on a, not just on concept but their application so it's the strategy part it is testing you on your problem solving skills right so that is what people generally underestimate a lot and that is how they can you know leverage this part of gmat if because people consider that this is just wisdom this is just knowledge theoretical knowledge so but this is knowledge which will come in handy if you prepare in the right direction right so this is i think these you have put complete you have put, put everything in completely right words and you know you completely summarize the essence of gmat as something that i would put great great to hear such insightful thoughts from you so moving on to our next course uh, you know so what did you change now you know what where did you you know make these error on so what did you change in your next attempt so um uh, to to get to that straightly uh, i would just give uh, just have a background that you know once you once you have a score which is 640 after so much of preparation like i said there is a lot of self doubt coming in uh the very next step that uh that you question yourself is whether you want to give it again or not 
and once you made up your mind that yes you are giving that exam again what you generally do is hit the google button and start searching for best gmat prep online and you know that's that's what you do and 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 your the search engine throws up thousands of options everyone's you know telling you thousands of things that okay we have a xyz number of you know assured uh, scorers and xyz things and you tend typically go with the reviews uh, you know the google reviews or any any typical reviews that comes on the comes on the websites that okay those so many number of reviews have given five star ratings or four star ratings to that for that particular prep method and then you tend to you know buy into that uh, propaganda or, or 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 say promotions and then you take one another course again so i was uh, i mean uh, that was a similar method that i took for the first time preparations i went up i ended up going into a particular um, you know course preparation method uh, looking at the google reviews and you know uh, at from the reviews that was thrown into the web portals uh, i didn't really apply lot of you know other research going into the gmat because like for the first time as i i also understand since i was a first timer giving something called as a gmat or a, or a competitive exam like that uh, you don't have really a background as to uh, how to judge a particular you know prep material or a prep course online so you tend to go with the general flow of uh, promotions and everything and i also went into a particular course in that manner so i was very confident when i got when i when i got 614 i was you know uh, uh, you know say entirely depressed so i made sure that i would not go back into you know just relying on the reviews part you need much more than that to uh, actually you know uh, judge a particular prep material you can't just say okay this is a review this, this there are so better reviews about this course so this should be the one it need not be right so you need to go beyond the reviews and i stuck to that i i shortlisted three four courses and i wanted more of a personalized one you know there is always generic courses you have you have a lot of prep prep materials on the portals you have gmat club throwing in you know a lot of questions but there was nothing coming to me as a personal uh, you know personalized manner or you know um what do you call it that could give attention to my weaknesses or my strengths mm-hmm. uh, and suit my preparation in that manner so i don't want to have another prep material coming and throwing me hours and hours of a topic which i'm already strong at i don't want to waste my time on that right i want to concentrate and focus more on the areas where i'm not strong where i'm weaker so uh, that those are the areas that i was that was my requirement when i was searching for the next prep material and uh, fortunately i would say um, you know gmat quiz came into my uh, you know short listing and I, i and i believe uh, i don't remember the exact person who who with whom i had a you know the trial call the mentorship uh, initial call but uh, whoever was that i think he was very helpful to you know identify the exact point that i had to say before i could even say he was able to identify the problem and uh, tell me that he was very very uh, you know professional in telling me that okay looking at your next previous score and your you know uh, particular segment wise scoring uh, this is what i would recommend you you should go for this particular course you know and since i had a little bit background of preparations he recommended me to go for the online modules and he didn't expect me to go through the entire you know preparation video lessons and all but yes he went he asked me to go for the okay. online modules uh before i could even enroll for that i took the free mock trial uh, the mock trial that that is there and the uh, entire algorithm of you know artificial intelligence that that is mentioned uh, is absolutely true i would want to say that you know uh, because i think i think that's a very very uh, specific focus uh, which i want to highlight in this conversation that the ai model which targets um, exactly your weakness you know and and then throws up questions for you is something that that was really effective for me so one thing that made me look out for a new prep material was yes the personalization part and absolutely a uh, necessity was a different approach to learning now that's that's the second thing that i'm talking about uh because i had given i had i did a you know bull run in the previous attempt just running then just studying everything all along uh, without any particular you know focus or strategy as or planning and i didn't want to do that again because i knew uh, i had my strengths in a particular area or uh, of sec one I, i was good at geometry and i was good at algebra but i was not good at inequalities and i was not good at uh, let's say um, you could call it uh, the coordinate geometries i i had a trouble going there 
so i wanted something that that helps me focus on these things which are with a smarter way to learn and not just give me throw up you know formulas and stuff like that and particularly obviously the verbal part is something that i was really really worried about given the rc score which was uh, very disappointing at the, to start with uh, so that was my focus point when i wanted to look out for the new uh, you know prep material mm-hmm. okay so majorly you did not rely solely on the review count you searched about it exhaustively you get went for a free trial you booked a consultation call and then you went for the you know course what's there in it great great so so there are few things which you changed i guess you know the, you went for a proper strategy proper structure in your study then you also went for right strategies so when you speak about the right strategy right approach so what is this approach or what is this right strategy that you talk about uh, Let, uh, can you elaborate on them especially yeah, with an example I- absolutely uh, uh, you know uh, i'll come to the very specific example in verbal because i want to definitely elaborate on the examples there but uh, when i meant strategy uh, like i like i just pointed out in the previous uh, answer that uh, something that focuses on your weaknesses i think that is when when you when you go with a generic practice material or a prep material you have hundreds of questions spread out of you know spread out to all the topics and you as a person may not realize which one you are supposed to focus more on you know unless and until you have a particular person sitting in front of you and telling you that okay this is your weakness and this is your yeah you, you do maintain error logs no doubt you do uh, try to you know analyze your weakness areas and all but as much as you can do there is always it always helps to have somebody else tell you that okay this is your weakness so practice this more and this is your strength so you may choose to either focus on strengthening it further or maybe focusing on something that you are weak at so when i meant strategy i that was my first focal point to uh, you know f- uh, have a focus point on your weakness when i uh, secondly um, a different approach to answering the question so like like gmat has a multiple choice questions right a um, lot of time it, it doesn't matter that whether you know the correct answer or not you just supposed to know what is the wrong answer now you just supposed to not mark the wrong answer so a lot of times gmat sets those traps in the question itself and and you just supposed to identify that trap at the very go and then probably you don't even have to look at those options you can then probably easily answer the correct one right away especially what happens in uh, son- sentence correction for that matter so uh, earlier you go with the typical grammatical error uh, model you will do look out for the first first word of the first sentence last word of the underlined sentence the word after the comma these are the typical you know key key areas that you consider which is which is fairly a method i wouldn't say uh, entirely wrong but yeah it has its own uh, limitations but the moment you step into a meaning based approach that what gmat was typically highlights the whole game changes you know then then you're not looking at options then you're purely looking at the meaning the moment you have the meaning i think you can drastically reduce the time consumed to answer a sentence correction from 1 hour 1 minute 30 seconds to probably even 50 seconds or 60 seconds or you know you can easily save close to 20 25 seconds in a question so that is something that i really faced in uh, that was really a nail opener for me in uh, scs particularly even though i was scoring better in scs before i would still recommend you know i would still say that there was a good uh, learning for me in the scs uh, i would keep the rc part uh, at the end so that you know that's a key highlight for me uh, with respect to quant like i said i always believed that quant was my strength because i could start right from the time i gave my first mock in my, from my previous prep i was able to score a q49 q49 50 or a q48 consistently right so i knew quant was my strength but then when i once i uh, enrolled with gmat with uh, you know module online module and i found a very different approach to particular weakness areas of mine such as uh, you know inequalities and coordinate geometry so those two areas had a very different and unique approach in solving the questions that i suddenly was able to pick up those questions much faster and and i was able to answer them much quickly and uh, you know the i some somehow i turned that into my strength i think thanks to gmat was for that but yeah the inequalities and coordinate geometry is one area that i would definitely want to give credit to gmat was because i found that to be my weakness in the earlier part of quant but yes that turned out to be my strength now coming to the rcs i think the the biggest uh, trouble maker for me uh you know it's 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 a it's a no brainer that uh, rcs 
kind of the most trickiest area is yeah is for see. everybody so you know this is actually the you know pegging point so i've also put up your esr on the screen and where you yeah. see that you scored a rc 96th percentile and as i showed to people that you know your earlier score in the rc was 19th percentile only so we would definitely love to know more in detail in just two months of time with a full time job how did you actually manage to get from 19th percentile to a whopping 96th one so um, so rajiv i think uh, the biggest mistake that we do is we believe that we can find out because reading comprehension as the na- name suggests it's it's something that we have to read the paragraph uh, and then answer the question that comes along right and something we think okay it's a passage okay we can read that we can pick on the questions it's going to be a straight forward one that's what we're going mm-hmm. to believe but i realized i think uh, that's the biggest mistake that you can do it's 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 kind of the most trickiest uh, sections of gmat on the whole uh, con- you know across the sections across the subjects so rc once you have once you go in with a regular reading approach of you know uh, i ha- like i would uh, i would tell you how i was i used to approach the rc method uh, you know i used to read those entire paragraphs once uh, and then i used to run run through the paragraph once and then try, straight away hit the questions then come back to the paragraph and then find those particular you know word locations and then try to answer them back it was easy when it is a location or a word marked question you know word based question you find out that word that can be answered and i typically believe those come under the low medium category of questions so and that's something you can answer that's not a problem mm-hmm. the challenge is when when there is an inference based question or a, you know typically a, a, what is a general point of the primary purpose of the passage and uh, inference based question that's when you can't go back to a particular line and then keep searching it will you'll end up searching for a, for your lifetime and you may not find an answer on that so i think that's that's where the approach of inclusive uh, you know uh, uh, the typical gmat quiz method of learning uh, what what do you typically call it as <laughs> evolved and involved reading evolved and involved involved and evolved uh, reading of the comprehension i think that was a fantastic addition to my uh, entire preparation method i think all the credit goes to that evolved and involved uh, reading method uh, because then then i i mean uh, i would have hardly solved 10 passages 10 to 12 passages from gmat quiz to be very honest uh, but oh, that's the great. that's surprise that, to know i know because i'll tell you it it would i would have solved on a, at, at the the whole length of uh, reading comprehension passages i would have hardly solved 12 i would say maximum 12 to 15 not more than that but the the but the preparation that goes behind that uh, you know rc passage solving that those short video lessons that we have on the modules about how do you approach and how do you develop the involved and evolved uh, you know reading of uh, comprehension you know there are a lot of um, webinars that are there and um, pu obviously emphasizes on the evolved and involved reading so the that method of uh, you know solving uh reading comprehension drastically one one that benefits is brings down your time of solving the question within within like what uh, hardly the moment the only time that you consume is read uh, you know reading the passage once the moment you have read your passage once and you have already put all those summaries in your brain through inward and evolved reading methods i think it's a it's a no brainer to solve those questions in like 30 30 seconds it's it's not you just require to read the question you know the answer already and you're just searching for the options you, you're not even eliminating options there but yeah like like uh, for uh, for uh, practical purpose you should go eliminate all the answers that is for the theory but what i can definitely tell you is the moment you you take that approach it was a it was different ball game altogether in terms of rc you know right from the first sentence you are starting to think like an author that why this why the sentence is there and why is he placing the sentence next you know you, you then you start predicting those sentences after a point okay uh, you know he's going to tell this after this you know uh, the first paragraph is talking about this so obviously you know the next paragraph is going to be a contrast or it's going to be an uh, you know example of the previous one you're already predicting that flow the moment you have the flow in your mind i think it's fairly very easy to infer it's fairly easy to um, you know find answers from the passage uh so i think that method and those um, 
specific strategies of using those involved and involved method was a very very big addition to my rc uh, you know uh, solving and it was tough i would definitely say it's not very easy to uh, do it every do everything along with your uh, you know uh, work yeah. work schedule but i think uh, nothing comes very easy i mean easy. you wouldn't you wouldn't value this score if if it came to you very easy right and, and as they say would, if it were easy everybody would everybody would have done that exactly. Yeah, exactly right. yeah but i and i but i having said that i believe it is gettable it's not something that uh, you know because you got a 650 or a 670 because you generally tend to hit a plateau of that 650 range that's something that is very obvious uh, because i've been there done that so uh, having 650 doesn't mean you can't breach the 700 barrier it, in fact it is an evident that you can definitely breach the 700 barrier you already have your basis right uh, all you need is an application strategy and i think uh, rc i think people will have to will have to stop taking it for granted in their lives <laughs> going at yes your newspapers and all these things will definitely help uh, studying those uh, you know typical newspapers economic times and your uh, all those newspapers will help but it's a different ball game to solve a gmat rc question as compared to this uh, because you are not learning you're not reading and you you generally read a newspaper to just know the facts you don't you know, read a, yeah yes. yeah you don't read a newspaper to solve a question here you require to infer something and take it further so that way i think uh, there's a different approach to this and uh, in from gmat wis which is a very unique thing is what i understood from the other method because i have already been through uh, three four prep materials before and have, i haven't come across this approach earlier i would say that great great to hear such nice thoughts from your side so there's a follow up question uh, shrinivas how did the platform help you imbibe that approach because when we are learning something new it it's like our mind rejects it right so we face a lot of difficulties right and that's the struggle that we need to overcome so i want you to know from your side how was how good was the platform or the if the mentorship guidance so whatever were the attributes how did they play a role and uh, what was the impact finally so um, i think it's a wonderful Uh, user interface with gmat was uh, like like i said it 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 was an unmanned uh, portal right i mean there is no one sitting in front of me now i mean uh, probably i'm interacting live with a face right now for the first time uh, without you know but having said that uh, not a single moment uh, there wasn't a single moment where i felt i was alone in that in that portal uh, to be very honest mm-hmm. because uh the the video lessons are crisp and sh- shorter so that you retain the concentration number one i think uh, with, with respect to the portal those small video lessons are are very aptly sized it's it's not too long for you it's not a one hour session or it's not a three hour session that okay you re- you lo- lose your focus after five minutes it they, those are very strategically timed like 10 minutes or 12 minutes so you you have the push to finish those uh, you know video lessons and once you learn those once you have your learnings from the video lessons you have those specific five five question quizzes and that that five you never realize when you end up solving 20 questions you know concept there are four quizzes yeah the one there is a concept solidifier there are a couple of solidifiers there are concept boosters and after the concept boosters you have the practice quiz so suddenly you end up solving 20 questions out of the concept and then and that's all you need to solve honestly you don't have to solve thousands questions to master a concept you hardly need to solve like say 20 to 25 questions and that's exactly what the gmat list throws and one peculiar aspect about I'm sorry that, shrinivas uh, you got cut in between when you said that you know uh, after the concept booster files can you please yeah, repeat so, that yeah sorry my my bad uh, so I, like i said the, the the platform throws you the concept solidifiers and the concept boosters and then after the concept booster you have a practice quiz questions so all these put together you have a 20 25 question bulk right so the moment you solve 20 25 question i think that's all you need to uh, do for for mastering a concept you don't have to solve let's say 100 questions to master a particular concept and the and the very very uh, unique part about this entire portal that i felt was it not just focuses on the wrong questions what at least i could observe it not mm-hmm. just focuses on the wrong questions even those right questions where you took more time to solve it throws you that that focus point you know okay. many times in gmat you 
you might get a question right but you would have ended up spending a lot of time on that question that you hamper the chances of the subsequent question right you might uh, waste your time on you might have to hurry for the last question next question then you again end up faltering there so it even it even throws up analyzes that those questions where you are uh, you know spending a lot of time to answer and then gives you feedbacks and you know throws you additional practice questions or you know video lessons to focus on those areas as well to brush up that that, that knowledge i think that is something that that was a that was a very 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 essential or a very effective um, aspect of my learning there you know especially with respect to quant like i said inequalities and coordinate geometries uh, even though i was getting it right from my approaches it somehow i don't know because i was spending more time it threw up the short video lessons again for me to revise the moment i revised i realized that okay my approach was wrong even though i was getting the right answer and uh, so i would i would now change my approach and then try solving it um, one thing that i would definitely suggest or recommend to people who are using gmat is stick around i think you you finish the module as it says you know do not jump out uh, you know do not jump into no over uh, skip do not skip any modules i would that's what i would recommend because the very purpose of having an effective learning is to go through that process i think if you if you miss out on that process then probably you may not be able to take the best out of it uh, best use out of it is what i believe but yeah so that's that's something that's very very unique about this portal i would say okay great great so that personalization on the go is something that you are refer referring to that you know you get feedbacks you get personalized modules to practice and there are even lectures based on your weaknesses and strengths that will pop out you know as a for in a form of suggestions or recommendations from the ai itself that will help you in getting through the uh, weak areas in a most optimum uh, fashion right great 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 to hear that part so finally rivas uh, you have structured your plan in the second prep you have modified your strategies you have worked on them and now you're sitting in the you know in the actual exam so what advice would you like to offer to people you know for taking the advice while while they're in the center oh uh, i mean that's 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 like um so 50% of the game is preparation i think 50% of uh, the game is about sitting in the exam hall <laughs> i think because what yeah temperament absolutely it's a temperament it's more than uh, more than retention of what you learned uh, mm -hmm. i think how you maintain your calm and you know how you, how are you cool enough to approach the question because uh, like from my personal experience when i when i got the 720 score uh, i chose uh, verbal to start with it. that's generally what i do because i feel by the time i finish quant i wouldn't have much gas left in me to no focus on the verbal so i generally tend to pick up verbal yeah. first and then go with the quant so uh, so when i was going through uh, verbal i found it a little satisfactory because i re i realized that this was going better than my previous attempt uh, so i was a pretty confident and i took that 8 minutes break in between verbal and quant and then i refreshed myself and i was telling myself okay yes you know you you're doing good in verbal now keep up the spirit in quant and then i hit the quant uh, session and the very first five questions are like a nightmare to me and i'm going nowhere with that with that answer and i am and i am you you start to panic right you 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 start to panic and then you're like okay you did you you bettered your verbal now you are spoiling your quant and then you're going to end up with the same place like before so that's when you need to take a breather for a second and then tell yourself that okay it has 30 questions you don't have to get all 30 right you know to have a very good uh you know score uh, in fact even a 740 or a 750 scorer would have hardly uh, got 20 or 24 questions 20 or 22 questions right out of 31 right in in quant you, you can't get 30 out of 30 31 out of 31 i, I at least i haven't come across anyone telling me that they got all 31 right uh, nobody shares their esr <laughs> you know anyway so so yeah like i said uh, it's all about uh, retaining your composure at, at the exam center uh, you know maintaining your temperament that you know you can still finish off well uh, even though you start uh, not so great there mm -hmm. there are good chances that you will finish well uh, so you just have to keep going up with the momentum and uh, uh, you know going ahead uh, you just have to believe in your process of learning because obviously you all have i mean we all have put in our efforts uh, uh, it's not for nothing that we would have spent so many hours in preparations do uh, uh, you know you have a structured now that you have bettered a structured 
better your strategy by you approaching us you know having a structured based approach and learning specific things you have to then give yourself a belief that okay you need you are able to do that and you even though you start off no, not so well i'm pretty sure you can end it well so because there is the, the you know uh, there is a higher penalty for not completing the exam than getting a question wrong so it's okay if you get one question wrong uh, you need to move on and then you know leave it behind uh, because if you end up not answering 31 questions the penalty is much much higher much than much getting higher. five more questions wrong you know so that, that way i think temperament is is the key for i like i said 50% is the temperament uh, i would give a lot of percentage to temperament because i think that's where i went wrong in the previous time and one of the key points that you mentioned in the temperament part was you know managing your test taking strategy for example the one point that you mentioned that you know it's better getting you know getting past that question than you know getting stuck at those few questions and you know taking it as a challenge or a new or taking it as sometimes what we call it in root language taking it on your ego to solve it anyhow right, right? so rather than doing that so, you know I just would... you know play on that strategy and you know leverage the algorithm to your own advantage so there are many ways to do that and you know that's one of the beautiful point that you brought up so that uh, you know that's about the test taking strategy as well so that's one of the point great great to hear such you know insight one again another insightful thought from your side shrinivas so there's one if you were to give any last piece of advice to people in terms of which course they should go for and so or you know what would you recommend them and why uh, uh, rajiv can you just come back to with the question again i'm i'm not able to yeah sorry so if there was if it were for a last piece of advice to the aspirants out there that you know uh, if you were to recommend a course for their gmat preparation which would that be and why i mean it's it's hands down i mean uh, uh, it's hands down you should go for the gmat with method uh, uh, yes there are there are good courses good prep materials uh, outside and uh, i mean it may not be exactly the same revelation that you that i had you know you will also have but uh, when you tick almost ma- major major boxes uh chances of things going right is higher you know that's that's what you aim for you can't uh you can't uh, just go on plain luck and then just choose a course and uh, then say okay, okay i'll now get it right it's it, it's not that it doesn't work that way uh i mean as far as my experience goes i i did do two courses prior and then i was searching for uh you know uh the third one and after a lot of deliberations and research and online you know things uh, is when i concluded to go into uh, gmat with so i would recommend definitely people to do their research their own analysis their own style of you know checking things not just rely on you know pure numbers of reviews or pure numbers of uh, five star ratings because there are a lot of there are a lot of prep materials i mean it it also depends on the number of people voting right you know you never know i mean i may not be voting diligently into a particular website but i might be supporting something very diligently but mm-hmm. so it's always a personal thing but i would definitely recommend gmat was to everyone but having said that please do your research is what is a, is my definite piece of advice please do your own research how do you do that research is uh, speak to people around if you have any 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 in the particular field or uh, uh you know you you can watch videos who are sharing the real life stories you can you know take a mock i mean i would definitely recommend people take a mock trial of that particular portal you know that's very very important how do you get a feel of that that particular system are you comfortable with nobody sitting in front of you uh, are you part- comfortable with a particular approach uh, is it is it too rigid is it personalized is it is it uh, does it have enough content or, or spread across topics all these are things that we need to you know you need to factor in before uh, you take up a course so once you have the research done i think whatever course that you choose should be good enough but having said that i would definitely my 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 suggestion definitely goes towards gmat as anyway great great to hear that so when we have uh, you know one excellent question from paul that you know after you completed your modules what did you do to improve your rc scores the days before your actual exam was it just only practicing the questions per se or what was that what was the secret so so uh, i think it's 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 kind of uh, tricky uh, to to answer this because whatever you answer may may or may not work the other way the same way for the other person but yeah what i personally did that once i had finished all my modules i started giving those uh, so there are this uh, what gma uh, whisk quiz uh, is what is there in 
uh, GMAT quiz portal, uh, and you can probably select and shortlist your uh, uh, number of questions on a passage, and then you can even select the difficulty level uh, in the portal and then start solving them. Uh, the key is to, uh, you know, focus on the approach more than the number of questions that you solve. I think uh, that is something that we need to keep a very good, uh, the, you know, focus on that. How are you solving the question rather than how many are you solving? Okay. So it's, it, it doesn't matter really that uh, I have finished my modules and uh, I've hardly done, like I said, I hardly did what 12 to 15 RC passages before the exam. So as, as per the general standards, it will be very less and people would be scared to, you know, go with that. The the anxiety would kick in that it's okay, you've just hardly done 12 to 15. How are you planning to go for the exam? But uh, I think it, it more depends on the approach. So it, it there is no benchmark number of, uh, you know, questions, how much you're supposed to practice. But yes, you have to be in touch with the prep, uh, else you lose out the, on the momentum. That is definitely there. Great. So focusing on approach again is the key to you know yeah. get over that. Great, Shinyava. So I think it was a beautiful session. You know, great insights from your side. So it, it's really uh, you know insightful to have people who have gone through the struggle and you know then they are coming out to help these aspirants out, taking their own time from you know from their busy work schedule. So it's it was a pleasure. It was really a pleasure to have you and answer all the you know burning questions inside of us. So great to have you over here. So finally, guys, uh, we are at the end of the interview journey over here. And I uh, hope you got, got to learn a lot from Srinivas, especially one of the pain areas that's, you know, that pinches almost every aspirant out there in the RC section. And so if you want to have more personalized based off study or plan what you should do for your next attempt and if you're a retaker you want to make your next attempt the last one i would suggest you to you know go over to this link which i have pasted over there i have shown in the i will paste that link in the comment section box right away and the link which is visible over here uh to you so what i'm gonna do I'm going to paste that link over here in the comment section box. So this, if, using this link, what you can do is you can book a free GMAT consultation call and you can reach out to GMAT with uh, people and they will help you in deciding what next course of action should you follow and how you should strategize your next attempt. So thank you guys for joining us in this live session. And it was really a pleasure to have you, Sri Srinivas. Thank you so much for being here. Pleasure is mine as well. Thanks, Rajiv. Thank you so much. Okay.